least they win. <laughs> Hi, welcome to uh, Comic-Con at Home. Uh, my name is Rick Offenberg from First Comics News. I used to be the Public Relations Coordinator for Archie Comics, and um, we're here to do the panel, How to Get News Coverage. We're here to help you with your small press project or Kickstarter project, and how to get coverage from the media. We've got a variety of people in the media and who are working on small press projects who can help you with information that uh, will help with your project. And uh, so I'd like to start by having Holly introduce herself. Hi, I'm Holly Golightly. Um, I'm vice president and a creator at Broadsword Comics, which I run with my husband, Jim Bount, who's the president and creator. Uh, we've been publishing Tarot, Witch of the Black Rose. I can show it. For 20 years, fancy. Nice. Um, thank you, thank you. And um, I, with him, basically we've been doing this all on our own, uh, where we just, this was uh, issue 121 that I just showed you. Uh, we just finished 122 last week, so I'm exhausted. Um, and now we're creating a whole bunch of things. I think I've done, uh, around eight Kickstarters, all uh, successful. So I, I'm pretty good at answering those kind of questions. And uh, we're here to make the world a little funner and happier and brighter. So that's me in a nutshell. Thank and I, I did a lot of art for Archie Comics and stuff like that. So yes. <laughs> Sabrina the Teenage Witch, enough. appropriately enough. Yes, I guess I was the only witch to uh, illustrate and write Sabrina oh, wow. the Teenage Witch. <laughs> um, so, and okay. I did Pete, Pete, you want to go next? You're, you're here. Me? Yeah. Okay, I'm Peter Bro. I'm a Space Award finalist writer. I, uh, I write for exciting comics. There's uh, one of the ones that I've written. Uh, uh, for Antarctic Press, I also write for uh, Mississippi Zombie for Caliber Comics. I'm currently doing a uh, thing for the Indie Wars with Adam Fields. That's a sample of some of his art. I also uh, am the social media director for uh, Second Sight Publishing. And I'm also their assistant editor in chief for the Second Verse. And I'm a frequent uh, collaborator or contributor, I should say, with uh, firstcomicnews.com. All right, Jeff. I'm JC Vaughn. I'm vice president of publishing for Gemstone Publishing, the home of the Overstreet Comic Book Price Guide. We do a weekly newsletter called Scoop that has a, a site and is part of the Previews World uh, extended family of sites. And we uh, cover a lot of small press things there. And I we made the mistake 11 years ago of saying we should do this panel every year. <laughs> well, we've enjoyed that. It was a good idea. Aww. Um, okay, uh, Mike, you want to go next? Hi, I'm Mike Kingston. I'm the uh, writer and creator of Hatlock Comics. Um, we've been, uh, for about 10 years, I've uh, collaborated with maybe like 40 or so different professional wrestlers um, on art and story to produce uh, comic books. Uh, I've written for Boom, and uh, I have some stuff coming up for the Ominous Press and Three Voice Productions. So, uh, yeah, that's what I do. I've run four Kickstarters. I actually have a Kickstarter going on right now. Um, so, uh, not technically, but in the future, yes. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it, uh, it'll be going on right now, and uh, so people can check that out. <laughs> All right. Uh, Ed, do you want to go next? Sure. Hi, everybody. My name is Ed Cato. Uh, I'm the uh, founder of Agenda. We're a uh, firm that specializes in consulting for small business for strategy and consulting. I'm also an educator at Ithaca College, where I focus on entrepreneurship. The most fun thing I do at Ithaca College is a course on comic conventions. And part of the reason I do that is because of my uh, background doing a lot of different things in the world of comics, all of which are in the most fun category. Um, most pertinent to this particular panel is uh, I'm a co-owner of Captain Action Enterprises. It's a property from the 60s that we've brought back and we're working very hard to uh, manifest it in new ways and understanding how to get press and how to keep a um, uh, IP sustained 
uh, is paramount for that project. So uh, happy to be here and happy to see you all again. Thank you. Rob? <laughs> Hi, I'm Rob Salkowitz. I'm a writer and sayer of things about comics. I write for Forbes, for ICB2, and for Publishers Weekly. And a lot of my job is kind of talking about the business side of comics to a professional audience, particularly with ICB2 and Publishers Weekly, and then also explaining comics to an audience that may not necessarily be comics fans uh, at places like Forbes. Thank you. Uh, Marty? Yeah, hey there, everybody. Uh, Martin Bruda here. Um, I'm uh, the administrator of the Canadian Comic Book Alliance, which is a little bit of a uh, cooperative of independent Canadian comic book creators. Um, also write uh, uh, articles for Rick at uh, First Comics News. Thank you. Hello, Tanak. Welcome. Hey, ho. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, why don't we start with a few how-tos, um, just what you do to, when you're launching your project, you've got it finished and you're trying to get some coverage. If uh, you know anyone has some advice to someone just starting out, uh, yeah, why don't uh, Jeff? Why don't you start if you can with the process of how you would submit something to Diamond if you thought you could get your comic in the book initially and get an audience if you can. The first, the first thing I want to say about whatever we're doing is whatever your creative effort is, if you're trying to connect with a fan base before you do a Kickstarter or before you get your book in previews or whatever like that. Uh, Holly, this is the part where I say something nice about you every year. Uh, <laughs> do what Holly does. Connect with the fans. She's relentless about it. Uh, I don't think out of, I, I don't know a couple of these guys, but out of the groups that we have regularly, she does the best job of relentlessly being in touch with her fan base. And they know what is going on with Tarot and any of their other projects in a way that Brian Polito does with, with Lady Death, uh, Billy Tucci does with She. And these things are all like real personal communications and, and, and it's sustained, it's an effort. It's, you, you have to understand that the marketing hat, if you're an indie creator, it's always, you're always gonna have to be able to switch and drop the creative hat and put on the, the marketing hat. Uh, I have to I have to be honest. I have to. I have to interrupt you. I'm sorry, yeah. but it, it's it's very natural for me and a bit selfish because growing up, you know, I, I was kind of different. And really, to read, yeah, just tad. Uh, not a lot of girls were really into what I was into. Star Wars got all the tattoos to prove it, and um, our readership is almost like an extended family, and it, it gives me a lot of joy and comfort to reach out. And I, you know, I was raised by an entrepreneurial family, so I'm strong with the shorts, and I, I get such joy uh, promoting what we're creating. So it is very natural and something that, you know, no one taught me or told me to do. I just had to do it, and I love to do it. So well, I, I think the one, yeah. thing, the one thing that shows about that is your ability to sustain it. There's a, there, when you're doing a Kickstarter project, it's, I don't want to say it's easy to switch that on. You have to switch it on. It doesn't matter whether it's easy or not. Um, you've, got, you've got to be able to do that. But you sustain it not only with the Kickstarters, but you're, 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 you're going live on Facebook and doing all the other things that you've done, uh, reaching out with them. And I feel like that's a, it's a really natural extension of your customer service. And I've, I've, always, you know, I've always been envious of, of your ability to do that. At the same time, back to your question, Rick, uh, I think that the thing that people should you know getting ready for uh, submitting their, their work to Diamond, and this is true if you've got a completed creator-owned project that you want to submit to, to Image or something else like that, it's got to be finished. You've got to be ready. And you know the great thing about being able to send things these days, we send PDFs. You don't have to send some finished comic or something you know, that's, been, that's been printed, and okay. you, can, you can get reviewed along that. Um, they want to know your ability to back it up, your ability to deliver on, on the thing. And, you know, they'll want to know what some of your marketing plans are. Uh, it's been a long time since I've been in a position to do that with Diamond, so I can't actually answer the specific questions of, you know, what, what check boxes you need to check. But they, you know, there's, they're in a position where 
they're always looking for good comics. I've gone to Small Press Expo with Steve Jeppe himself, walking around. He said, I'm always looking for the next bone. You know, they're very, they're very open to small press if it's, if it's done professionally. Yeah, Ed, you raised your hand. Yeah, you know, one thing that I would, I would say is maybe I, I challenge or, or ask you to tweak that um, question a little bit, Rick, because I think it's important for creators to start thinking about the promotion at the same time the creation process works. I, I don't think it's linear, like create the oh, book yeah. and I got it all finished. And oh, now I got to sell the darn thing. I think, it, it, I think that the folks who are most successful are creating and they're looking to see who's doing things like them or, or steal some good ideas that other people are doing. And I think that as you're, you know, as you're in it, and, and again, the folks who, who uh, uh, are uh, extroverts, maybe it's easier for them, but everybody's really got to do it. Um, as, you're in, as you're in it, in, in the creation phase, I think at the same time, you should really start to think about the business phase and the um, uh, uh, PR phase of it all. That's, I, I right. That's a really good point. I definitely, I mean, I try to do that myself. Um, just because a lot of times, I mean, if you're running a 30, 60 day campaign and you're trying to hit people up, I mean, they've already got their stuff booked. So, I mean, you want to try to get your media and stuff set up ahead of time as much as possible. And uh, the other thing I would tell people that are new to Kickstarter or new to starting a project is just to be a part of the community now. Nothing, I mean, I'm sure we've all had it. Somebody friends you on Facebook or follows you on Twitter and then immediately right behind it is the DM or like, check out my stuff. And it's super, super off-putting. And you kind of want people to know about you before that sort of thing goes on. I'd back like 200 Kickstarters. Like I'm a part of the community. And I think it's, you know what I mean? You don't want to just show up with your hand out. And what can you do for me? I think that that's a real important part of just being a, being a part of the indie community and not just showing up and, you know, with your hand out. How do you yeah. get people engaged in between projects? Yeah, for for us in the in the uh, uh, community, in the independent community, <clears throat> what we find is is like uh, the fellow just said, you know, if you're part of uh, a, a bigger social network, you know, um, let's say you, you you're starting your Kickstarter and you want to look for some support and stuff. If you've already supported other people's Kickstarters, that is a a, a contact that you have that if you say to them, hey, you know. I was on your Kickstarter. Here's what I'm working on. That off-puttingness uh, disappears, you know, because all of a sudden it's like, hey, you supported my stuff, so I'm going to take a look at your stuff. I'm going to I'm going to reciprocate that. So that's a huge part of it as well, you know, uh, be part of that community as everybody is saying, and right from the beginning, right from the get-go, you know, get uh, get get a sort of a reputation amongst your fellow creators of of being part of the the process right yeah i think proper planning is extremely important too because you need to have uh, enough time if you want to be on podcasts if you want to get media out there to uh, to get reviews to not say i'm launching tomorrow you know you you run you want to get it started early and arrange the contacts and because when people contact me and say they've got a kickstarter coming they tell me a lot of times i've got a kickstarter starting in a month um, you know, I got, I got a Kickstarter, um, that, that told me that literally one month and they'd like to arrange a review and an interview if they could between here and there. And, uh, it makes a difference that you can schedule it. You can get someone lined up to do the review. You can get someone lined up to do an interview and then it's all, um, easy. And just to put on my hat for a second, um, that, we, it, you know, we don't live in a single platform world with all of this stuff anymore. This is a really rich social media environment that we're in. And so look, not just Kickstarter, because Kickstarter is the thing that will get your project funded. But as you're doing your project, put your pages on Instagram and interact with other artists on Instagram and get people saying, wow, that, that art looks really cool. Like, what is that? Like, de develop some intrigue around your project. Also, a lot of people successfully integrate Patreon and Kickstarter in that you get a Patreon started just to get some cash flow coming in, but it also creates that core of 
early enthusiasts for your project who are getting the sample pages, who are getting the behind the scenes interaction with you as a creator on a month to month basis. So that when your project does kind of break the surface and say, okay, I'm ready to do a Kickstarter to get this printed, or I need to hire a colorist, or there's some piece that you're trying to get as part of your project through the Kickstarter, you've already got a fertile ground to throw those seeds on. And it's not as, as you guys have been saying, coming out of nowhere. And well, that's what Steve Conley's been doing on the middle age uh, with it. He does the pages on his Patreon. And yeah. then, and then right after that, when he's done with a volume, the, the, the Kickstarter only has to support printing the book. Yeah. Paul Gannon's doing the same thing with his uh, Aztec history project. There's a lot of creators that are making that sort of multi-platform thing work for them. And it's like, don't be, don't just be committed. It's like Kickstarter or nothing. It's like, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of ways to get attention and get um, interest in your project even before it's a project. Does anyone have Patreon here? Their own? Okay. Holly? Yeah. So how do you get people to, you, you launch the, you already have a huge audience, but you know, because you got 20 no, years of history. Think. But how do you, when the day you launch the Patreon, how do you find an audience? How do you get people to join? I, I honestly set it up for a, a friend of mine um, who wanted to write books. And I, I said I would do the art. And um, I personally find, for me, uh, it, it's not helpful. Um, I, again, we're running a company. And that's wholesale, retail, you know, fulfillment. I do Facebook, Instagram, all that. And uh, to do Patreon the way the other guys were talking about, that, that's just a lot of work. And um, I didn't see it helpful for me. What if, uh, what if you're, you're starting out and you have uh, no funding? Right. Do you think um, that would be a good way to start? I was encouraging her to, to use it that way. And, you know, it could be the audience. It, it was um, a, a, a book about two girls who save up all their money to go to Disney and have one treat a day. Um, and it, it, was, it was called Sweet Adventures. Um, but I think that if, if you're not, I, I don't know, because she's a very uh, friendly, outgoing, on Facebook kind of girl and still I saw that it, it was very difficult to uh, harvest a new uh, audience um, but again it could be the subject matter we, we do a free uh, fanzine and in, in one of my Facebook groups in, in the G-Man Club and, and even though it's absolutely free to download uh, you know, we still only see like 10% participation. Right, right. One in 10 right. wants to download it, even if it doesn't cost them anything. So I would assume that if it costs something, your, your numbers go down even lower. Yeah, that's I not true. Um, that's that's not actually true. not true. That if something, if you're charging for something, then you're, then you're telling your audience that it has value. If you're giving it for free, you're telling them it has no value. So uh, a, lot of, uh, uh, a lot of places will charge even just a nominal amount, and they'll see not just better uptake, but better engagement because people are invested in it. You give something to somebody for free, they stick it in their bag and they're done with it. And then they throw it out when they get back to their room. But if you paid for it, different story. True. Oh, great. Now I'm going to have to pay for the G-Man magazine. Thank yeah. you. No, no, no. We're doing it free. It's, it's not the way it works. Yeah. But I mean, again, uh, um, I see Patreon working for some people and for not others. I, I could not put the focus that I think I would need to, to help that project and again if that's your your baby I, I can't see how it can't not help you know I I, I, I see more for writers yeah I see cosplayers doing great you know so doing uh, killing, yeah. yeah intimate photos um things like that they're, they're like you said they're killing it and that's great uh for me I I find Facebook is great for comic books to get the word out Instagram is is fun, but not as strong as Facebook. Facebook, I see our readers there. You know, um, what what? I said I agree. I, I we uh, uh, tend to use Facebook for everything. How do you attract yeah. uh, readers to to second uh, insight projects? 
when you're launching something? How, how do you attract the new readers who don't know your product? And how do you fund, um, you know, if you're just starting out and you're ready to print? Who's asking? Are I'm, you asking, asking? I'm asking for uh, Peter because uh, he, he was just on the screen and he was talking about that. Oh, my mic's not working very well, so I didn't, I didn't hear everything that you said. Oh, for second sight, um, how do you attract readers and how do you fund uh, for your project when you're done with it to, to actually get it to market? Well, right now we, we're open for submissions and we're just looking for uh, completed works from people. And we get quite a, quite a bit of stuff right now. And uh, as far as, as funding goes, um, that's uh, that's not really my department. Okay. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm, the, I'm the I'm the the person who promotes the projects. Okay. All right. You'd have to talk to Marcus Bradley or or or, or Marcus uh, or Marcus Roberts or Bradley Golden about that. Oh, okay. I mean, I think the bottom line is you're going to need some money to start up. I mean, it depends. If you're an artist, I think it's different. But like for me, I'm a writer, and everybody's going to want to see art. And I mean, you, you really need to pay artists to be able to produce anything in a timely fashion. So like for me, I mean, this is kind of extreme or whatever, but I mean, I worked two jobs for almost a year to be able to make enough money to pay for the art and my first print run of my book. And I built a fan base selling that book. And then when it came time to go to Kickstarter, then, you know what I mean? We were, we had a really, you know, our first Kickstarter was $28,000. So, I mean, I think it's... I think it's just a matter of, you know what I mean? Like, it's a lot easier to pull something from something than it is from nothing. You know what I mean? If you're a brand new project and whatnot. So I, I don't know. To me, it was made sense to make money first and then invest it in myself. Yeah, when you when you started, I, I was there, and uh, we we covered your, the launch of the first Headlock comic, um, but you didn't self-publish that, that you had um, published that through a print, a uh, different publisher. Sure, but I still had to pay for everything. I mean, they, you know, they just you know, provided I mean, distribution. Indie, I mean, indie publishers. I mean, are essentially a diamond account. I mean, yeah. that's what most publishers are now, honestly. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, I did everything. I mean, we put the whole book together and handed it to them and put it through their diamond account. So, I mean, that wasn't. It didn't really work for me. So. I found it easier just sort of stepping outside the direct market and marketing directly to wrestling fans going to wrestling shows, um, you know, getting, getting stuff in the wrestling media instead of, you know, at a wrestling show, I'm the only guy with a comic book at a comic con. I'm, you know, at the comic con, I'm still kind of special because I'm the only guy with a wrestling comic, but I mean, I'm still, you know, there's me and 500 other comics. So for me, it was about finding a niche and going directly to my audience in a way that you couldn't in the direct market. Well, that's a, that's another problem that you can have with uh, that. Oh, sorry. Video died on me here. That's another problem that you can have with uh, diamond is that back of that catalog is so saturated with independent books that it's really hard to even convince some comic book buyers to even look back there to see your stuff. So the promotion at comic conventions, like you said, or, or wrestling shows and stuff becomes a big thing, but you got to have finished product on the table. You know, you can't sort mm -hmm. of have scripts sitting there for people to look at and then pay for the, the convention table. You got to have finished product there. Um, I surf artist alley at every single con convention I go to and usually walk away with a, you know, a one foot stack of independent books to, to peruse and, and look through. So yeah, it, like you said, invest in yourself, get some money, get something on paper, something that you can actually give to a, a potential customer to, to look at and spread the word. So Marty, if uh, someone wants to be reviewed in Marty's Spinner Rack or they want to be on your Hey Kids uh, Comics podcast, how do they submit to you and what are the good submissions to get and what are the bad submissions to get? Yeah, it's it's one of those things where I'm not I'm not so much of a of a reviewer in the traditional sense of the word. I don't do bad reviews. If I find a piece of uh, property or something and I just don't like it, I don't talk about it. I'm not there to slag anybody. You know, I might send the fellow uh, or the lady a, a follow-up email. You know, I didn't like this part. You could work on this. You could do this. But I don't, I don't like to do that in public. So I just get, uh, you know, I pass around the business cards at, uh, uh, at comic conventions. Um, 
people have read some of my stuff, the emails there on the website. So we get a lot of email submissions and, and people just like, Hey, I've got this thing. Can you show it to, uh, you know, can you review it? And again, the criteria is, is it a complete project? Is, is it, you know, uh, entertaining and, and professional and, and, you know, something worth uh, rising above that sort of indie creator noise that happens. And uh, it, I put it on the on the site if it if it appeals to me, and I want other people to know about it. Yeah, I, I like the Surf Artist Daily as well. Um, I, I I talked about this on the panel before, but I found uh, creators who have stuff for sale at the convention at Artist Alley, and they don't have a website. They don't have any ability to buy it if you're not standing in front of them. So when they're ready to put out issue two, you don't know about it. You don't, you don't know that issue two came out. They don't know where to find you. And even if you really, really like their project, you can't connect again unless you're at the same convention they're at. And, yeah. and um, you know, sometimes you see them again later and they have two or three issues out and you never knew. Yeah, uh, that, that happens a lot in, in the independent world too. The, the other thing that I notice, a big mistake that, in, that uh, people who start out in the field do is, their social media accounts are their personal accounts. So instead of finding, you know, uh, the great big comic book, you're finding Joe Smith and there's a thousand Joe Smiths on Facebook or something like this. So when you do get into the social media aspect of things and you do start the promotion, create a social account specifically for your project, you know, create the website. Websites are super easy these days with Wix and, and, uh, you know, go I used go daddy. Exactly. You know, yeah. go daddy for and, our all ages. Yeah. And <laughs> WordPress is so su super brutally simple to find a template and create one. It's not like the old days where you have to spend $12,000 to get a, a, a web presence. So you can do it very, 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 very easily. Um, and it, even if it's like you said, just a landing page, this is who I am. This is my art. This is my email. Send me something. I'll send you a book. I yeah. think it's important that they have a cart integrated. And like you said, all those companies that we mentioned, they, they have an easy integration. Because I, I had just started uh, the PrinceKangerbon.com for my all age book because Tara, which of the Black Rose is grown up readers. And at first it was like you said, a landing page. But then I started expanding. I started making like perfume inspired by it and t-shirts and whatnot. So they had a ready cart. So I paid a little bit extra for them every month and it's working like a dream. Because if someone sees your comic and they have an impulse and they can't buy it and they have to email you or this or that, you may lose a sale. Yeah, so that's very, it, very important. Most of it's impulse purchasing. It looks cool and you want it now. Uh, when people submit to me, and I, and I get a lot of them, uh, I, I don't really want a huge 300-page uh, PDF with no <laughs> instructions. Uh, really, just uh, maybe the cover and a small blurb, you know, just as a, uh, to reach out and say, "I've got this project." Uh, prefer if you were a regular reader and you were excited, you know, to, that we were covering you. But it's not a requirement. Uh, but uh, Definitely, you know, you don't want your one email to fill up my entire mailbox and, and cause other things to bounce back. Don't right. want to try and wait uh, for yours to download, especially if I'm looking on my phone and I'm waiting forever for it to download on my phone so I can get my next piece of email. Um, but uh, we're, we're real eager to promote indie creators on, uh, on the website. And so, you know, we're, we're, we're on your side. You just have to kind of help us. Uh, spell check is important. It would be nice if your sentences made sense and your words were spelled correctly in the email you send and the press release you send so that um, we don't think that your comic's also going to not have properly spelled words and proper sentences. Rick, uh, Rick going, going to what you were, you were just saying and to what Michael was saying before, when you are with uh, another indie publisher and they're submitting the book to Diamond or, or whatever, one of the things that goes on, and this goes way up the food chain, well beyond the indies to a lot of the major guys, is that they consider sending the solicitation to Diamond, copying those solicitation to some of the news sites. And I literally had a publisher tell me, well, I've done everything I could do. 
And that's got to be, that's got to inform your thinking about this. When you're, when you're sending something to Rick or me or anybody else, you've got to have cut to the chase. What is this about? What's, what, what, what's, what's your pitch? It's, right. it's, a, it's not, it is unfortunately not a meritocracy. You've got to get our attention. You've got to do it in a succinct fashion because you're right. competing with everybody else that does it. Oh, right. so Jeff, what doesn't work for you if they submit it to this, uh, to the scoop? If, uh, you know, one of the, one of the, one of the first things is uh, that we're, we're not strictly all ages, but we're, you know, we, we don't go very far beyond that. Uh, another thing is to me, when they send other stuff, it's like they're not reading it. And that's always the thing that you were, you were sort of just mentioned. You don't have to be a devoted fan of it, but you got to have some understanding of what the site you're pitching it to covers. And I think that there's, sure, think know there's, your audience. yeah, I think yeah. that, I think that's it. Um, and, and be you know your audience. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that that's a big thing. I've had the, I've had these experiences and Michael, it might've been you, but somebody else mentioned, you like go into oh it was Michael uh, you were talking about wrestling going you're the only guy at a wrestling show with comics right but you are uh, uh, just one of many at a comic convention I had the experience of going to a Stargate convention with our Stargate comics and there was maybe maybe 500 people total in attendance I I had the best weekend I ever had financially at a comic book show. Great. Because I had I had one paperback with two covers. If I had had if I had the rest, I would still be selling. Right. So on that, and that's the topic that's from the, the side. Um, that uh, it's amazing how much a little bit of etiquette and professionalism will get you. How far that will get you? Because you know I get solicitations from everybody, from big and small and stuff like that. I have more. I get more stuff than I can cover. I got to pick the stuff that that interests me and interests my audience. And if you've taken the time to understand, you know, who this, who, who the audience for my stuff is, and your pitch is crafted with that, like somebody, somebody the other day sent me a Kickstarter pitch with some data about who was supporting the project and what times of day and stuff like that, because they know that I may not be necessarily as interested in their subject matter, but my audience is really interested in like what's going to click on Kickstarter and sort of the, the larger business story. So if you can, anything that you can get that'll wrap, you know, the name of your project and name of you and your brand and the stuff around the things that, that the audience for a particular site wants to read, that makes the reporter's job easier, it makes the editor's job easier. Um, it gets more traffic for that site, which is what we as Unfortunately, it's an angle. The age, that's what we care about. And so, you know, you make my job easier, I will make your job easier for sure. Um, so yeah, just, just adhering to some of that stuff, sending a solicitation before sending the entire book. If you have something on embargo, don't just say this is embargoed until, you know, Tuesday at three o'clock, right? Say, do you want to see some information under embargo? Ask permission. Like if you Google, you know, PR best practices on, you know, you'll probably find, you know, 15 good lists of stuff that's not just like good ideas like that's the way you get stuff done if you actually want to get coverage in uh you know whether it's blogs or mid-sized media or big media follow those that advice it won't steer you wrong everything rob just said is spot on and i think one of the things about it is the professionalism of your approach the accessibility of your of your material like if if you if you are competing with a site that you know covers a lot of this stuff, make it as easy as possible. Sure, you can send your PR as a PDF, but throw the word document on there too, so the person can grab the text and and cut to the chase if they need to. Short, you know, go go shorthand here. The other thing is, and this is the thing that will get me, even if it's something I would be interested in otherwise. If you act like you're entitled to the coverage, you're not getting it from me. I agree with you. <laughs> totally. Uh, Mike, uh, Jeff was talking about this briefly, but you were promoting outside of the comic field. Uh, can you tell, them a tell us a little about how you promote uh, to more of a genre audience? Yeah, I mean, I, I find where the audience is. I mean, uh, I always, this is always sort of the hallmark of everything I talk about to people. But I mean, in 2020, I mean, you're not just competing with comics. I mean, you're competing with cat videos on YouTube and you're competing with Netflix and streaming services. I mean, you're just competing for people's time. So I think people just want to be entertained. So I try to find the audience that would like to read my book. So, I mean, my book is a, 
basically it's an HBO style drama about a kid working his way through the wrestling business. So I try to tailor my approach to wrestling fans. Um, so, I mean, I can set up an independent show and, you know, I mean, the, the outlay for a table might be as little as 25 bucks. Um, and you know, I can make a couple grand just because I'm the only guy that wrote the comic. Um, and it's been, a you know, I, I talk to, I, you know, I'll go on wrestling podcasts, um, you know, all kinds of stuff. There was a, there was a wrestling, uh, there was a, I mean, everybody kind of likes wrestling. So like a lot of times you'll, you'll be able to find like weird, obscure ways to, to get in front of you. I was on a, a rate, a sports show, a sports call-in show because the guy was a fan of wrestling. Um, and he was a, a professional football player and it was cool. You know what I mean? It's just, it just gets you, you never know who's going to be the person that that's like, you know what? This sounds kind of cool. I'm going to listen to it. You know, I'm going to check it out. So I do what I can. I try to, I try to exploit the angle that I have, um, you know, into a, a variety of different uh, avenues. So, you know, because like I said, a lot of people do like wrestling. A lot of people do like comics, but maybe, you know, instead of trying traditional comics media, maybe you find, you know, like, I don't know, Patton Oswalt is always tweeting about comics and stuff. You know what I mean? Like find somebody and send them a book. I mean, you know what I mean? It's not going to cost you anything. Just shoot a, shoot your shot, so to speak, I guess. Um, and you never know what happens. Um, but I mean, I think it's just a matter of, you have to go out and you have to find your audience. You have to find where they are. I mean, if, if you're doing a superhero book, but there's a, you know, a bent to it in some fashion, it's, uh, you know, medieval or something, you know what I mean? Like find people that are interested in, you know, maybe take it to the Ren Fair or something, you know, I think, right. I think just too often, I think we're just content to people are content to go to comic cons, put their stuff on the table and be like, come buy my shit. And <laughs> I don't think that that's, I, that doesn't work anymore. You yeah. can't, you can't be a passive salesman. Did it ever I work? I, I have a story. Myself, <laughs> Let's hear your story. The more, I other I people, the more it helps me. Oh, what you were saying, I didn't want to interrupt. Oh, sorry. No, what I was saying that I find what works for me in the past is the more that I help promote other people's projects, the more it helps projects that, you know, I'm trying to get off the ground myself. Because yeah, people like community. It's a community. People tend to want to help each other. Yeah. But I wanted to, to share a strange story. Um, when I wanted to become a comic book artist, I, I left the fashion industry and I had to support myself. So I started a cupcake business um, and I decorated the cupcakes with, you know, popular characters from comics or Cookie Monster or whatever. And I set up a little stand in front of a children's uh, theater production. And I would sell the cupcakes and give out cards and give free coffee. So in hopes that I would get new clientele. So, I mean, again, you had to sort of think outside the box of trying to find a connection somehow. Because I was doing children's parties. I thought, ooh, children's theater. Maybe I could find new clients there. So I think it pertains somehow. <laughs> yeah. Josh Hennemann. Take it, take it as you will. Josh Henneman, who's been on the panel a few times, uh, does a comic called Sort of Bigfoot. And where he markets his and where he goes are to the uh, cryptozoological uh, conventions for Bigfoot followers. Oh my goodness. And he's, he found a lot of support in that community, even though it's not a, you know, the story in his book is the Bigfoot's captured by aliens and they think they've got a human. <laughs> yeah, I know. But um, I think you, you have to look beyond find your people. Uh, beyond traditional uh, marketing too to find more audience to support you. Yeah. Uh, oh. yeah. Um, you know, I was going to say sometimes, I think also if you do something different at a traditional convention, and the, the example I'm thinking of, these guys were doing this Houdini book a few years ago, and they, they did this like straight jacket shtick, you know, uh, on the convention floor where it's, you know, two o'clock, they're going to escape. And, you know, it was fascinating. And everyone at that convention knew about that Houdini book just because it was, you know, so very clever, but authentic for what their property was all about, too. Yeah, very good. I've been able to do really well with that as well. Just having, like, I'll have wrestlers at my table. Like last year at San Diego, I had Jeannie Buss, who's the owner of the Lakers 
if she owns a women's wrestling organization. So, you know what I mean? Even though we're in the independent, you know, we're in the independent section and we're not necessarily, you know, the high traffic area. I mean, we got the aisles jammed up because people want to meet Jeannie Buss and whatever. And she signed for free and we, you know, we were able to get our stuff out that way and whatever. But I mean, it's just about finding different, yeah, th different avenues, I guess, to, to make a, you know, and that goes for conventions too, just to make a, make a splash. The other thing that you shouldn't forget if you're an independent creator and you've got an angle like that is that you're not just like doing a book about wrestling and the, the book is the subject. You're the guy who's doing a book about wrestling that's going to these conventions. Or you're the guy that did the Houdini stunt at the, at the comic convention. As writers, we like to write about people as much as we like to write about projects. And if you can turn yourself into a brand, uh, it's not only going to help your project, it's not only going to help the people that are writing about you and that want to read about you, it's also going to help for the next two or three things that you want to do. Um, so yeah, I mean, as creators, you know, you, it's tempting to get sort of myopically focused on your, uh, on the thing that you're doing at that time. But if it's, you know, and it's not the easiest thing in the world when you're in that world, it, when you're in that mindset, but if you can step back and sort of look at What's the, you know, is there more larger significance to what I'm doing? Is there a bigger story here? Is there something in my personal story that is interesting and newsworthy? Or is there a trend that's happening in the world that what I'm doing plays into right now? Because again, that's what the people on the other side of the screen are thinking about. Not necessarily how do I promote my, this guy's project because I like the project, but how does this play into all of the other stuff that's going on that's also interesting and is maybe more interesting than being one of the 10,000 things that are out there right now? You also have to know who you're promoting your project to because um, if you're going through Diamond, your customer is not the person who purchases the comic. Your customer is the comic shop owner. And you have to get them excited about your project or they won't buy it. And if they don't buy it, it won't get into its hands. And, so these, are guys, and these are guys that have read solicitations for years and years and years and years. So just doing a solicitation isn't going to work. Or if it does, it's a fluke. What you need to do is you need to establish relationships with them, postcards, phone calls, whatever it is, and say, would you be interested in this? And the chances are, because most retailers are fans or have been fans at some point, they're going to be a little bit more open than like, say, if you were, if you were trying to be a grocery supplier to a grocery chain, you know, there it's just bottom line here, the relationship can really help you. Yeah, I, was involved, I was involved in a little bit of a marketing campaign for a comic book uh, publisher. And that's exactly what we ended up doing is shipping boxes of books to uh, a few people, myself included. And I would just get in the car and all day Saturday, I hit every single comic shop I could hit. You know, I drove almost 300 uh, kilometers that, uh, that day and just, hi, I got this book. We're trying to get it in on your shelf. I'm Martin, blah, blah. Talk about the book for five minutes. The next 20 minutes of the conversation was about him, his shop, uh, her shop. Uh, what are they doing? What are this? And it became a, more of a social uh, uh, situation where we were just shooting the poop and, and just talking about the industry and stuff like this. And at the end, it's like, well, yeah, okay, well, give me 10 copies of the book. Good did you, uh, so how, did, how, how overall, how well did that work for you? Because that's what I did. Like, I did this back in 2009, and I got, no, I mean, that's what led me to, to stop, like, sort of trying with the direct market, it, because... It, it really depends on the property. This particular property had a lot going for it. It was printed on newsprint. It was done in an old vintagey kind of Marvel style and stuff like this. So it, it grabbed their attention and it was something that they were interested in and they were excited to, you know, give it to, to their customers. Um, I have definitely seen books where, you know, can I put this on your shelf and you just drop it on the shelf and you come back three weeks later, all issues are still there because the owner had no engagement on it. He didn't, he didn't care or she didn't care to promote it or push it to their clients, right? So you do have to get that interest from the key people at the store or they're just not going to point it out. And when you're looking at that, just like in the Diamond Catalog, when you're looking on that comic book shelf of new releases, there's a lot of books there. And if yours isn't standing out or if the owner didn't say, hey, check out this book here or whatever, it's going to get lost in the shuffle and it's not going to work. But I think as, as creators and as publishers, if we're not passionate about what we're producing, then 
then the, the sellers aren't going to be passionate about it either. So at Second City or Second uh, Site Publishing, we're exceptionally passionate about everything that we publish. We wouldn't even, you know, we, we look at a lot of submissions, but we only choose what's best for us. Mm. And we try to market it in the best way we can. And we're very passionate about, about all the people. And we try to establish friendships with the creators. We get to know who they are first before we uh, even try to promote the product. It's all really about building relationships over time with your audience, with the retailers, with the people you're in business with. And not only that, I have some people who, when I cover one of their projects, they stay in touch over the years. And so when it comes time to uh, promote the second issue, which is a harder sell for everyone, they've already talked to me a dozen times. Yeah. And they say, oh yeah, now the next issue is coming out. Or it's a new project and they say, you know, you did such a good job covering us from the last project, now I've got something new. And sadly, sometimes I don't even remember these people. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> I haven't talked to them a year or so. But when they say, oh, you covered this last year and we really appreciated it, they go to the top of the list just because I look, oh yeah, I did, I interviewed him. And oh, now I remember this. You know, and it wouldn't have come from without, you know, without the contact and, and the, you know. So well, that's, that's part of the value of if you can afford it, even somebody that's a small time publicist that maintains relationships that like their job is to maintain those relationships. So I may not know you or your book, but I know the person that's sending me the email and I know that they know me and they're like, hey, this thing might be of interest to you because of X, Y and Z. As a creator, maybe you can't, you don't have the bandwidth to, to keep files on, you know, 50 different retailers or media outlets or, or, or whatever, but that's a job of somebody else. And if you even, you know, a couple hundred bucks to spend on that um, is the kind of investment that you can make if you really are interested in, in getting some public, publicity. Um, when I had my book come out a, a few years ago, um, I had uh, the, the publisher themselves did some publicity, but they didn't really know the market very well. So I thought, let me find somebody that actually understands the comics market and the comics press. And I got more mileage out of like $250 that I spent to get a press release out to the right people coming from somebody that was known and trusted than I got from McGraw-Hill Public Relations, which nobody in my, you know, that, that was going to read my book, you know, cared that much about. So just a, just a thought, there are people out there, you don't need to spend a lot of money on them. There are some very top drawer people that, that represent a lot of folks, but there's also people out there that just know the stuff to know and, and can get the word out for you. There, there are actually only a handful of people who um, I, I know who do public relations for comics specifically. And um, usually if I get an email from them, I already know them and like them and I already have a relationship with them. And so it does give you a leg up over you sending your own press release, but not a ton. You know what I mean? Because if, if you send me the cover and it looks cool and you, you know, and the little text blurb you sent looks interesting, you didn't have to use someone else who um, sent it. And I have a personal web email address and I have one through uh, the website and then I, I end up with a few others in other places. And sometimes the professional companies, because they, they know me, they'll have all my email addresses. So I might end up with three or four of the exact same press release from the same person. You know what I mean? If they're a marketing campaign, whereas I'll just get one from the person who's doing it themselves. It's just hard to have a list of contacts if you're out there by yourself. I've got a question, I've got a question for uh, you, Rick, and then the same question for Rob. Uh, what's the best thing or weirdest thing that anybody did that successfully got your attention? Um, usually it's the hook. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I like the Bigfoot hook. I, I mean, he had multiple hooks too because he was into craft beer and his comic company was Brewhouse Publishing. And so he pushed that hook. He pushed uh, Bigfoot. He pushed uh, the aliens. And, and a lot of that caught my attention. And so it really is to say, oh, well, that's interesting. I wouldn't have thought of that. And had it been, uh, you know, just a regular superhero, generic superhero book, it might not have caught my attention. And so he was able to, to look different than everyone else on the market. Rob, how about you? Yeah, I, I can't think of anything that like translates to a best practice. I mean, I, I have memorable projects that have come in. There was one, there's a great one, uh, 
I don't know, seven or eight years ago, called Dim Sum Warriors. That was a uh, uh, it was an app that was bilingual in Mandarin and English. It was for teaching kids on both sides the language. But it had it was a manga featuring the characters in the manga were uh, like dim sum, like food, like there was like a chicken foot and a and a dumpling and, and stuff like that. It was just a cute concept wrapped around a really innovative idea, you know, fronted by two really dynamite, you know, articulate, you know, eloquent creators who could not only talk to why their project was cool, but like what they were trying to do as a larger mission. So it's like, that, you know, for okay. me, it's like, I have a very particular set of stuff that I write about. And if you can hit it in the sweet spot, like I'll, I'll, I'll pay attention to stuff that's completely out of left field if it checks particular boxes for me, I guess. So, and I think Is every that everybody there? that writes that has a personality and an identity as a writer will be the same way. So just pick that lock, figure out what works for that person, and you never know. I had a, I, I, I had a uh, small press company that I covered early in the days of Overstreet's fan. And we, we really tried to go that way. You know, obviously Wizard was not focused on the indies. We weren't going to be the comics journal or something like that, but we really did try to at least keep the flavor of that stuff in. And I covered uh, these guys in an early issue and they were just blown away that their art got in, you know, uh, an Overstreet publication. And so they called up and said, what can we do? And I like, I had no idea, you know, uh, uh, and I'm just glad to cover them. That was it. And, and I, and I had just relocated from the Dallas Fort Worth area to Maryland and I was desperately homesick and I go, I don't know, send me a chicken fried steak. <laughs> and about a week later, I get a call from Steve Jeppe's uh, executive assistant saying, there's something down here with dry ice. Would you come get it? <laughs> and it was enough, it, it was enough chicken fried steaks for our whole staff. Uh, and we took them down to the cafeteria, paid them a little bit of money, and they did them up, and that was our lunch that day. That's, well, that's nice. Uh, Jeff touched on this earlier, but uh, when, when he was talking about PDFs and Word documents, but just uh, as a best basic uh, best practice, most people you're sending this to can't use your PDF for text. Um, you, you use it for art, definitely. But uh, when you try and unpack the text from a PDF, it doesn't come out smoothly. If you attach it just in a text as a text doc or as a Word document, we can then manipulate it. If we're going to do it in print, which we do some print coverage um, in, in the fanzine, you want to be able to just cut and paste. If we're doing it on the website, you have to cut and paste. And it doesn't readily export from there. And it also doesn't export well from your email because you get a lot of odd breaks in the email when you're cutting and pasting from the email. And some of the email services also give extra code that you have to then remove. So um, if you're sending something in, it's best to send just a brief blurb and um, a picture of the cover and a reasonable size for us to examine. And then if we like it, you can send us uh, like a, uh, Dropbox link or something like that so that we can uh, download it and look at something larger. It's a PR uh, practice to put, it, put your press release in the body of the email as an HTML formatted email that you can cut and paste rather than as an attachment, even if it's a Word document. Um, it's just one of those things that makes it easier. But going back to the uh, one thing that will really capture my attention, if you want to attach something, attach a JPEG. If there's a one dynamite image from your Thing. If your art is really good, or you've got a really dramatic single image that will sum up what your comic is, I'll build a story around that image because I know that if I can put that image as the hero graphic on my story where it travels with that story in social media, I'm going to drive more traffic off of a cool piece of artwork than I am off anything I write. So if you, again, it's like uh, we're in a visual medium, comic creators are. Um, so use that to your advantage because that's something that'll that'll help me sell a story better than almost anything. Also, if, you, if you're promoting to a website and you want them to cover you, you have to realize that they're investing time, the people who are writing the stories investing time, they're hosting fees, they're all sorts of things there. They're in business too. And so you have to make yours work within the confines that they have. I mean, if, if they're working uh, on their own and they're, they're doing it with all volunteers, they still have people who have only a limited amount of time to donate to covering your project. So you've got to make this as easy for them as possible. And even if, you, if you're trying to pitch something to Newsarama where the people are paid and, and it's a heavy traffic site, 
they don't want to invest a lot of time and effort into something that's not going to get a lot of eyeballs. And so you really have to make this as easy to cover as possible. Yeah, if you're, if you're, if you're going to be sending a, a PDF, I know piracy is an issue, but let's not slap this big, huge, massive watermark on the images so we can't use them on the, on the site. You know, it, it send along, like everybody said, you know, some key graphics and uh, an in interior page, a, a cover, whatever. But uh, yeah, I've had a few people send me a PDF with these big, huge, massive, ugly watermarks all over it. I can't use that in an article. Yeah, I, I, I want to cut back to what Jeff said earlier about uh, getting the, the cheesesteak sandwiches. Um, I, I think something very important as a creator is to always follow through with your promises. So if Chicken you fried. To send somebody <laughs> cheesesteak sandwiches, send the sandwich. Chicken fried steak. You know, if you, or if you uh, promise to uh, have a PDF ready by Friday, have it ready by Friday. You know, always, always make sure that whatever you promise, say somebody like us at Second Sight, if you're promising us that you're going to have a, a, a fully read, ready comic by Friday, we'd like to see a fully ready comic by Friday, you know, because that I find as a creator, that's very important that I meet deadlines. But as a promoter, it's also important that my creators also meet their deadlines and that they follow through and that 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 they uh, thank everybody that's part of their team, that they're team players. Like I like mm -hmm. to see credits, everybody's name in the credits, not just written by or drawn by, but written by, drawn by, inked by, colored, this, 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 and this, because everybody wants to feel like they're part of the team, right? You know? They are. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely they are. And I find the more I promote other people's stuff, the more people want to promote mine. Agreed. All right, we've got uh, about 10 more minutes to wrap this up. I don't know if anyone has any last ideas they want to share, but uh, we're, we're reaching the end of our time limit here. Yeah, yes, uh, yeah I, I had an idea. I'm, I, I don't have the answer, and maybe the group does, but you know, this is an extraordinarily odd year for so many reasons, and in this industry, um, you know, a few months ago, we were kind of thinking these summer conventions might bounce back. Maybe the fall conventions will bounce back. Every day that goes by, it seems like that's less likely. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if anyone has stumbled across best practices for promotion uh, that don't include um, uh, going to conventions. In other words, a lot of the strategies we've talked about have been conventions along with uh, uh, other tactics and now the conventions are gone. I've like, got one, I've got one Ed and, it, and it's yeah. only, it's only come up recently through uh, Kickstarter and Indiegogo. Uh, I've seen people offering uh, at varying lengths of, of video chats with creators. Now for most of us, we're not name brand creators. Uh, but uh, you know, like some of the, like some of the bigger people, Holly, Holly, uh, you could do, you could do this. Um, if you haven't already. We we do it already. We don't pay. It's not a premium. We go on Facebook and we have chats. And we're, we're actually going to be launching a Kickstarter quite soon. Um, and one of the things I do is I actually offer uh, a live um, commissions where uh, they pledge for a package. And then for a certain premium, uh, they can watch me draw their commission. Live. That's 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 perfect. It's it's just like that. The uh, you know writers uh, more could give like uh, you know script advice or something like that, or right. or just answer questions. But it, there's 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 some that's different true. permutations that can go along like that for the, for particularly for those of us who are paid not to draw. <laughs> I also do um, tarot readings. That's another premium. <laughs> you do them live online. Um, I do them live. I do uh, free one card pulls as a promotion when we're doing a Kickstarter. And then one of the pledge levels is a one to two hour, it depends on the reading itself, uh, private um, through uh, FaceTime or Skype or, or Zoom now. Uh, I'll do a full reading for them. And um, I've done it uh, for quite a few of the Kickstarters and I've got a lot of repeat people and whenever I offer them, they support 
my witchiness, <laughs> my, my, my tarot skills. I started when I was eight years old. So 47 years of doing it. It's, it's happening pretty good. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I love it. It, 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 it's a lot of work, but it's, it's very intimate and, um, and special. And that's, you know, why oh, awesome. I'm doing this. Hey. I mean, again, what, what? going back to the visual part of the medium, I personally love these art process videos, and especially if you're using something like Procreate, it lets you record your process and you can kind of speed it up and do a time lapse and drop that on Instagram or TikTok or something like that. And as you're scrolling through the, the timeline and you're seeing somebody's, you know, uh, artwork emerge from nothingness, uh, yeah. it's just very visually compelling. It's really cool. There's artists that, that are doing stuff on Twitch, you know, where you can sort of watch them do stuff. There's a bunch of comic artists that have very uh, well-established uh, instructional channels on YouTube that they're making some money on and things like that. I mean, it's not great, but if we're all stuck at home, uh, I know I know Ed is a fellow uh, uh, scribbler uh, who also uh, dabbles much more much more accomplished than, than you might imagine on the illustration side. And it's like, if you're interested in that and everybody that's a comics fan secretly wants to like know how the drawing works and stuff, that's a good way to uh, put that out there and draw some attention to yourself and your brand. Yeah. yeah Adam Fields, he's doing that. He has an art by Adam Fields and he, he does a live, almost daily live promotion of his artwork and it, it stuff's really good. Oh. I'll even cook live. <laughs> yeah. Or show my cat. <laughs> do, do you ship out the meals if people pledge? Yeah. Um that's that's a that's a I, I don't know. I, I, I do I'm pretty good at shipping and, and I do gold belly, so I can well, watch how they ship it. Well if if you could ship a chicken fried steak to Jeff, I think we got something. Yeah, right. Here. <laughs> it's not my specialty. Oh uh, well now you know. <laughs> I, I had messaged Holly during the chat here. Now I'm hungry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's why you should always eat before you kibbutz on video. <laughs> <laughs> does, does anyone have anything to wrap this up with uh, that, that we haven't plugged in here? And the, if not, then I'd like each person to plug whatever projects they're working on and where people can find you so that if they have questions after watching the video, they can connect with you and get uh, some more one-on-one -on -one advice. Uh, okay, you want to start, Holly? Okay, so as I said, this was our anniversary, 20 years of tarot. The next issue will be in stores on June 24th. Even though the craziness hit the stores, we got really healthy numbers and diamonds like, go to press, go to press. So that'll be in the stores. And then uh, this was part of our Kickstarter, the Teen Tarot. This was actually um, a stretch goal because we did so well, they get a free comic. Um, and this was also an add-on, my vampire number one. Uh, we do fancy limited editions. And here's the Prince Pangerbon trade paperback. That This was also a Kickstarter. And I started promoting my own fragrances. And they actually have matching bracelets. Okay, see that? They're yep. created by a Reiki master. So uh, for a full witchy ritual, you wear your fragrance, you wear your bracelet, you go out <laughs> into the world and you kill it. There you go. <laughs> uh, and you can find us on jimballant.com. That <laughs> is our main website. Um, I'm on Facebook, Holly Witch. I'm on Instagram, Broadsword Comics, and on Twitter, Broadsword Comic. You could also find Jim there on Twitter, Jim Ballant. He's on Jim, uh, Facebook and Instagram, Jim Ballant. Oh, Peter? I got a long one here. I'm, uh, uh, I write for Exciting Comics uh, for Antarctic Press. Uh, the newest one should be coming out soon this summer. I also write Unknown Tales for Lucky Comics. I write uh, Green Giant should be in a self-titled uh, self comic coming out soon from Lucky Comics. I also write that. I'm, I currently write for uh, 
Mississippi Zombie through uh, Caliber Press. I actually got a storyline with my twin brother in here. And uh, I'm writing a comic uh, called Saw Wayne's Gate with uh, number one best-selling Zombies on the Rock author Paul Carberry. And I'm writing... Uh, I'm writing... Uh, a comic for the Indie Wars, the upcoming thing that Ben Dunn's doing through Antarctic Press. He's getting uh, all kinds of indie creators together to uh, do a crossover event to help with, uh, with the slump in comics. And I've got a 16-page story in there called Constantine's Bane, and I'm doing that. And this is one of the pages of art. Uh, the art's by Adam Fields. For Second Sight Publishing, we are doing upcoming Lady Freedom, Spike Gerald's Lady Freedom should be coming out soon this summer. We have the Cult of Dracula over here. Uh, this is uh, by Rich Davis. This uh, originally was written as a play. Now Rich is turning it into a one of five comic book. Uh, book of Lyaxia by Aaron Pora. Uh, this is gonna be really good. And over here, if you can see it, over here in the wall, maybe I can bring you a little bit closer. Uh, can you see the one that says these damn kids on it? Yeah, it's a little fuzzy, but yeah. Okay, well this one here, this is also coming out from Second City, or sorry, I keep saying Second City, maybe it's the Canadian in me. Second Sight Publishing, and this has been just picked up by Spirit Rider Productions in option to be a feature film. Very good. Oh, oh, I can be contacted. Uh, we have a uh, uh, site publishing uh, uh, web page. You go to second site publishing llc.com. Uh, I also have my own Peter Bro comic book writer um, website. And uh, you know, if you want, anyone can message me on Facebook if they want me to review any of their stuff. If they want to submit to uh, Second Sight Publishing, just please go to the web page and follow the prompts. All right. Um, Mike, you want to talk and uh, tell us what, about you? Yeah, um, all of my social media, my website and everything is Headlocked Comic. It's one word. Um, we have a Kickstarter going right now for uh, – a collected edition of stories that I've co-created with a bunch of famous wrestlers called uh, Headlock Tales from the Road. I think we have 14 different stories um, with, uh, that we've done with uh, televised wrestlers. Um, so uh, that should uh, that's out. Um, I just uh, finished the script for uh, an adaptation to the uh, independent MMA movie Cage Fighter. Um, I wrote a prequel to that. And that should be coming out. I should be on Kickstarter, I think, in July or August. Um, yeah, and then we're working on... Uh, I, I produce comics for uh, Pro Wrestling Crate every month, 12-page uh, 12, uh, 12 comics that I co-create with different wrestlers in all different kinds of genres um, for uh, Pro Wrestling Crate. So uh, check them out. Okay. Uh, how does someone contact you? Uh, everything, all my social media is headlocked comic. It's one word. Okay, and then they can direct message you. Uh, yep. Jeff, uh, how do people contact you? Well, I've, uh, right now, projects uh, just on sale now is the Overstreet Comic Book Price Guide number one, facsimile edition, with uh, Action Comics number one, topping the guide at three hundred dollars. Uh, it's their fiftieth <laughs> anniversary, so we did that. Uh, Overstreet number fifty is in the pipeline. Uh, we're still working on that. We're delaying a little bit because of the circumstances. Uh, the best way to get a hold of me is through Scoop. Uh, Amanda Sheriff is the person who takes the submissions there, and her email is samanda at gemstonepub.com. Uh, you can find us at scoop.previewsworld.com. Very good. Um, okay. Um, Marty, uh, you want to give us some information? Sure. Uh, so we do a weekly podcast called The Hey Kids Comics Radio Show, available on all the major platforms. Um, and then the Canadian Comic Book Alliance is available at theccba.ca. Take a look at that site, and, and there's just a, a, an amazing assortment of, of great Canadian, Canadians, Canadian creators on there with their projects and stuff. We're just about to release uh, issue seven, I think it is, of uh, The Adventures of Aurora Man. 
some other books there. So have a look there. Very good. Um, and what about uh, how would someone contact you personally if they wanted uh, help or advice? Or oh, sure. sure. Um, yeah, the, I, I write the... every week for. Uh, uh, hold, hold on one second. And can you hold on one second? Let Marty oh, just finish. Sure. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, no problem. Uh, if you need to get a hold of me personally, the easiest thing to do is just go to my website, www.boruta.ca, B-O-R-U-T-A dot C-A, uh, or reach out to me at uh, First Comics News. Thank you. Okay, Ed. Now oh, yeah. Interested. Sorry, Marty. Oh, what no. bad form. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay. Yeah, I write for uh, Pop Culture Squad every week. It's uh, even more prestigious than Forbes.com. Uh, that's just my opinion, but I think most people would agree. Uh, two quick things. I write for uh, Back Issue from Tomorrow's. Uh, like everybody, they're struggling. If uh, They've got some great sales if you're interested. Uh, just uh, co-edited these amazingly fun books for uh, Clover, uh, Pirates, and uh, they're all Golden Age reprints of pirate books. A lot of fun, too, if you need something for lockdown. And Thanks again, Rick. This has been a ball. Oh, great. And how would someone contact you? Uh, best way is through Pop Culture Squad. Okay. And Rob. Okay, so uh, unfortunately, I'm not quite at the level of Pop Culture Squad yet, but if you <laughs> want to follow my random scribblings, uh, best thing to do is just follow me at Rob Salk. Is that, is that reading front to back for you? Yes, I, I can see it properly here. Okay. You got it backwards. So follow me on Twitter. That's where I shamelessly promote all my stuff for Forbes, for ICB2, for Publishers Weekly, for various podcasts and stuff that I appear on. Um, if you do like what I write on Forbes, there's an option to subscribe on the site, um, which I really appreciate. My editors like that too. Um, so uh, you'll never miss a Rob Salkowitz musing on comics if you check that out. Um, and then also if you follow me on Twitter and DM me, uh, that might be the, the best way to break through the clutter on a pitch because um, I usually get back to that pretty, pretty quick. Oh, very good. Um, and I'm Rick Offenberry again. Uh, you can find me at First Comics News. Uh, there are links on the website to email me. But it's uh, rik.offenberger -E -E at First Comics News. Um, if I'm just playing around on the web, I'm active in uh, MLJ fandom. And you can find me at the Shield G-Man Club where other people who like these more obscure characters hang out. And we do a fanzine there, which is free, as I, I mentioned earlier, and Rob thinks I should pay for. Uh, but uh, we do a free PDF fanzine and uh, have fun there. And um, that, that's about it. We appreciate that you all came and spent some time with us. And I got one more thing. I got one yeah. more thing. Oh, I, I forgot. I, I was just signed with, um, I think about a year, can you see? Yes. Yes. That's my painting. I've been signed with Spider Web Galleries, uh, which is uh, run by the Hildenbrands. And uh, so you could find my original paintings there. I'm um, being represented. Oh, very good. Spiderwebartgallery.com. Very good. So thank you, everyone, for spending time with us. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was useful information that will uh, help you understand what you're trying to do and how to accomplish it. And uh, we all really want to help you. We're only doing this and spending our time doing this because we love the industry and we love independent comics and we want to see you successful. So um, good luck and thank you. And may the